Hey everyone, this week we will be going over something that earlier in the week I kind of found interesting and thought maybe let's give this a go. So, earlier in the week I was going over some player pages on StatCast and I was wondering what if we could scrape these tables like the StatCast stats, the pitch tracking, the run values, the swing take, plate discipline, bad ball profile, percentile rankings, etc. So, I took a crack at it and found out you could scrape most of those tables without much of an issue in R. So, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a function to pull whatever StatCast table you would like. Um, the one disclaimer is I did have trouble pulling the StatCast shift data, so that's the only table. And also, we're not going to use the basic stats table, the the one at the very top of the page as well, this one right here. Uh, but in the meantime, let me show you how to create a function to scrape all of these tables. What we're going to be doing now is loading our libraries in our, um, the four that we have for today. Two of them are a mainstay on this channel, Baseball R and Tidyverse. And we're going to also load rvest to scrape those um, tables and xml2 to read those html tables. So, column by column library, you run all of them, give it a second or two to run. Great. Now, I have a CSV file written. Um, that kind of has those um, node sets for some of the tables for the StatCast pages. So that way you don't have to go on Google Chrome, go through Selector Gadget and select the table. This CSV file provides that for you. It also provides how we're going to write that function with that scraping. So we're going to call it SC tables, and then we're going to say read R, double colon, read underscore CSV. The same thing, sctables.csv. This will be on my GitHub. I always leave a link in the description below, as well as on my Twitter post and LinkedIn post. So this will be on LinkedIn and Twitter and, get, most importantly, GitHub. And so we read that in, and now we can give a gander at it. But essentially, it's just saying pitch tracking, expected home runs by park. So... What we're going to do with that function is basically get the titles of each of those tables that we saw in that player page. So like year-to-year -year changes, plate discipline, run values by pitch type, swing take. We're not going to have the slash in there though. And then percentile rankings, pitch tracking. Obviously there's some like stack cast statistics that are not in there, but there's a reasoning behind that. And let me show you that shortly. So. First, we're going to begin by writing our initial function, and I will just call it scrape statcast player table, and we'll call it under a function, and we'll add these arguments. So we'll add player as an argument, we'll add table underscore type as an argument, and we will add type as an argument and I'll say type equals hitting so the default is hitting and you'll see where I'm going with there shortly but then first to get those HTML code for those tables we're going to create an object called code and what we're going to do here is we're going to say sc tables piping operator dplyr filter table type equals table underscore name since that matches the column of the table name and then we're going to say dplyr pull code so we get that initial code of those nodes when we scrape those tables so now we're going to get to our next part which is more or less um, scraping those names and using the Baseball R's player ID lookup to get the player ID for the player that we so put in there. 
What we're going to do next now is a bit of um, the called strike code get ID. And what we're going to do is we're going to call names. And we're going to, to unlist string split player. And then within our string split, we're going to use space. So that's going to get our two different elements of the player's first and last name. Then for the ID part, we're going to use the baseball R player ID lookup. And we'll say last name equals names to first name equals names one. So that way we get the first name and the last name from the player that you put in. So if you put in, say, Mike Trout, that's saying the first name is Mike, the last name is Trout, so Mike Trout. Make sure you don't have an S for last name. And then add the piping operator, we're going to say D plier select MLB advanced media underscore ID, then D plier top N negative one. So we'll check, select the very first row and then D plier pull. Or we pull that ID in order to scrape that data into a URL. Now you can see I already pasted the URL, URL that we saw from earlier. And what we're going to do now is we're going to adjust it based upon the parameters that we select. So what I'm doing is a paste zero, and that's something I've done before, but you basically combine different elements that you select. So the first part of the URL, baseballsavant.mlb.com slash savant player. Now we're going to say names one, and add that other square bracket, and then the dash, because that's how the URL works in this case. Add the second name, so Paul the Young, his last name in this case, and add another dash, then add ID, and we can add question mark stats equals statcast dash, and then the comma, and then we'll add type since we say hitting or pitching and then the other dash MLB. So we can get the major league data. And so what this will do is paste in Paul DeYoung's name here, his player ID that we pulled, as well as the type, so hitting in this case. So now that we got the URL, let's do an example um, scrape with say the StatCast statistics. So originally I was going to do this a much faster way, but that way didn't work. So the way I'm going to do it is now I'm just going to be a very long if statement. So we're going to say if table type equals StatCast statistics, which again is from that CSV file, and they're just the capitalized the titles of each table when you see them on the page. So if table type equals statcast statistics, then we'll add the brackets. We'll add a second if because the in this case the tables are a little bit different in terms of comparing pitchers to batters. So I'll say if type equals pitching, then we'll do this. And then under here we'll add else if type equals hitting more on that later don't forget to add the bracket so now we're going to go in between the pitching and we're going to say df url so that url that we're going to paste in and then we're going to call the xml2 package called read html and we're going to say from arvest html nodes it's statcast underscore stats underscore pitching and then we will scrape the table so we'll again call our vest we'll say html node and this time we'll say table not able table then we'll say our vest 
HTML table trim equals true. Add another piping operator to co coerce it to a data frame. So we'll say strings as factors equals false. And then add another piping operator. And what we'll do here is we'll call from the per package, which is under tidyverse. And what we're going to do is we're going to set those names. And how that's going to work is basically it's a quicker way of setting the column names for this particular set. Really quick before I actually forget, um, I forgot to add under here a function called to lower to make it lowercase so that way the URL can accurately scrape. So when you put in a capitalized name, that URL will adjust to make it all lowercase as well as I forgot to put an R in here and a dash. So stats equals statcast dash R dash type dash MLB. Now we'll go down here and you can see I already put some code in. So essentially what I'm doing is setting those column names. So I'm saying season pitches, batted balls, barrels, barrel percentage, average EV, average launch angle, sweet spot percentage, expected batting average, expected slugging, WOBA, XWOBA, XWOBA contact, hard hit percentage, strikeout percentage, walk percentage, ERA, and expected ERA. So what that does is sets those column names. And now we're going to add the player name, so we'll say dplyr mutate player equals player from that argument that we called at the top, and then we'll say dplyr select season player, and then the function from dplyr everything, which means whatever columns that we didn't select are now selected in that order that it originally is. So we have that and that will get the data frame. Now I'm going to show you on the hitting side. So instead I'm going to copy and paste and then change some of these. So instead of statcast stats pitching it's for whatever reason statcast underscore glance underscore batter to get the batter data and for the hitters there is no ERA and X ERA so we can remove those and still run the same thing so we have those if statements so once we get out of say if table equals stat cast statistics once we get to the very end we'll have return df to make sure that we're returning that data frame so just for the sake of this video and time and how, however many functions there are, plus I don't know why I spelled hitting wrong. I'm just going to show you the code for this. The rest of the code will be pasted in, but don't worry, again, it will be on my GitHub when you want to run the full function for whatever table you'd like. So, I will run this function just to begin with and show you a basic example. So I will say scrape statcast player table and we'll say the player is we'll say Paul DeYoung though just Cardinals today and then our table type is statcast statistics as we mentioned earlier in our function and our type equals hitting. So we're going to be run this. Again, it pulls from the Chadwick Bureau. It might take a second or two. If you already have it loaded, it'll be much faster. So I recommend getting the Chadwick Bureau. And there we go. So we are able to pull Paul De Young's pitches um, and be able to manipulate his player. Now, obviously, all and or MLB, you know, shouldn't be Paul De Young, but that's the there's ways around that. Um, but at the very least, you have that StatCast statistics table now in R. So now let's try with a pitcher. So now we will try with Jack Flaherty. And we'll say StatCast statistics. And this time we'll change our type to pitching. 
So I'll run this, and it should be faster because we already have the Chadwick player ID table already in our in our environment. So now we can see Jack Flaherty's metrics, Statcast metrics. So what I'm going to do next is paste in the rest of the code for the function, and then run a specific type of code that I kind of showed on Twitter. You can see that I've pasted the code in already, and what I'm going to do is do an example of both a pitcher and a hitter of run values by pitch type. So I was very interested in seeing if you could scrape that. That was the main reason why I wanted to do this video. So we're going to do one pitcher, one hitter. So we're going to first start with Jack Flaherty, and let me make sure I run all of the function. Then run the run values by pitch type Jack Flaherty. So now you have season player pitch type run values per hundred run value pitches pitch percentage plate appearances batting average slugging woba whiff percentage K percentage per way percentage expected BA slugging uh, expected woba hard hit percentage. So we have that now. Let's so get Paul DeYoung. We're gonna do batting. And yeah, you get the same thing. So you get the run values by pitch type um, for hitters too. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time out to watch this. Hope you learned a thing or two. Um, feel free to like and subscribe. And subscribe, obviously, for future content. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.